This tutorial will cover what to do and what not to do when streaking a plate in the lab. Things you're going to need include a source of bacteria, either liquid culture or bacteria on a previously streaked plate, a new plate with which to transfer your bacteria to, what's called an inoculating loop, which will transfer bacteria from either liquid culture or your solid culture onto your new plate, lighters, a Bunsen burner for sterilizing the loop, and of course, safety glasses. Before you do anything else, it's important to label your new plate, writing down all words and symbols identifying the contents. When you do this, be sure not to label the cover of your plate. You should always label the bottom, as covers can fall off and get mixed up easily. Also be sure to label the plate with the date it is inoculated, and sign it with your initials. In our example here, we have Bacillus megaterium, 2010, by the American Automobile Association. The Bunsen burner is fueled by gas and will never burn unless its hose is connected to a valve located on the workbench and the valve is open. Once the gas is flowing, use the provided torch or flint to ignite the fumes. The wire end of the inoculating loop needs to be heated to redness with the Bunsen burner to sterilize it. You will have to flame the loop again after every bacterial transfer, so you can keep the burner going until you are done or, for any reason, leave your work area. Never allow the sterile loop to come in contact with any non-sterile surface, essentially everything. If it does, just simply sterilize it again. Every time you flame the loop, it will be very hot. You can test the temperature by touching the loop to an empty space on the agar. If the loop isn't allowed to cool, the bacteria transferred will surely die. When taking bacteria cultured on a plate, select cells from only a single colony. Whenever you work with plates, never completely remove the cover as you seriously risk contamination. It is also good to avoid sneezing, coughing, and digit flailing. Even breathing can be risky. The best practice is to hold the cover just above the plate, tilted slightly to allow for access while reducing the risk for contamination from airborne particulates. When taking bacteria from a culture in liquid media, start by removing the cap from the container without placing it down. Once the cap is removed, use the loop to collect a small portion of the culture and return the cap to the container. As always, be mindful of contamination. A hot loop is not a concern with liquid media, as it will be safely cooled on contact. To streak your new plate, touch the loop to the agar near the plate's edge and gently stroke it back and forth across about one-third of the agar's surface to cover it with bacteria. You will perform strokes like this two more times, and after every time, you will have to re-sterilize the loop. You will not, however, take any more bacteria from a culture. Instead, you will use the sterile loop to effectively drag bacteria from the area just streaked into an adjacent one-third of the agar's surface, spreading out the cells. Be sure to only pull the loop across the first third once, making the rest of the strokes in the second third only. Finally, drag cells from the second third into the final third, spreading them into the remaining space on the plate. The plate is now streaked and must next be incubated for the cells to divide effectively. Different cells grow most efficiently at different temperatures. In this case, we are culturing bacillus, which grows best at 30 degrees Celsius. Incubators in the lab are clearly marked with their maintained temperatures and are located in the back. In the case of bacillus, we will wait up to 48 hours before we check the plate for growth. Plates should always be stored upside down to prevent moisture buildup on the cover from dripping on the bacteria and to prevent the accidental removal of the cover when trying to lift the plate.